Curling Champions Tour coverage continues this morning with quarterfinal action here at the Champres Masters, high up in the mountains of Champres, Switzerland. My name is Armin Harder, and we're here with quarterfinal action. Real treat this morning due to his uh, incapabilities of playing, or or the or just the other ones were better, but. Uh, Michael, Mike's loss is our gain. I'd like to welcome a special guest this morning, Mike Harris. He's going to join uh, me for commentary. Mike, you, you managed to... I would say great to be here, but I was to say I'd I would rather be out on the ice. I'm uh, sure you would. I think the uh, the other teams were better. I think it was a good... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Harris, well known in certainly in Canada and in Switzerland, well-known in Canada, obviously a silver medalist at the Nagano Olympics and professional commentator with CBC. Yeah, I've been commentating for uh, oh, a good 12 years now, so um, CBC and now uh, Sportsnet, who's taken over the uh, the Grand Slams on the on the uh, World Curling Tour over in Canada as right, well, so right on. excited okay. to start that, uh, my first gig with them. In a couple of weeks. Very good. At Brantford, yeah. Should Very be good. good. And of course, Mike, well known in Switzerland, having yeah. lost that final yeah. to Switzerland. Yeah, that's actually I'm a folk hero, folk hero, I think, in folk. Switzerland. You are, <laughs> yes, you have somewhat of a folk hero. <laughs> I gave them a gold medal, I always I, say, the joke <laughs> arounds, yeah. I noticed the uh, the opening ceremonies of the Champry uh, uh, facility here, the uh, performance facility. Uh, we were very well received, obviously, and we'll talk about that a little later. Yep. First, we'll kind of introduce the teams here. We've got a Swedish matchup. We've got uh, Hasselberg against Ericsson. Ericsson, uh, we, we well remember having won the Basel uh, Swiss Cup final. And uh, Ericsson playing against Mar Marcus Hasselberg. And we'll introduce those teams if we can. Now we're into a relatively defensive first end, so we'll go through the lineup. And at lead, we have Christopher Sundgren. And this team Ericsson we're introducing here. Marcus Ericsson, at second. Don't know who Mickey Dubois is. Do you? Is idle. <laughs> it's bad that I don't know who that is. That's not bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oscar Erickson, who uh, will be standing in the in the house, skipping, playing thirds rocks. And Christian Lindstrom, throwing the fourth rocks, and his idol is Kiss, and his occupation is grave digger. Interesting. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. Yeah, somebody's got to do it, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we all end up there somewhere. Like. <laughs> sometime. And they play in the Lit Curling Club in Sweden. Champions last two weeks ago or three weeks ago in the Swiss Cup. Good young team, World Junior Champions yeah, a couple years ago. Uh, they'll be uh, pushing uh, World Junior Champs, yeah. They'll be pushing uh, Edin for that top spot in Sweden. Probably near future. We've got a relatively open and defensive game here. It's a good time to introduce the next team. Team Hasselberg, Anton Sundstrom at lead. His idol is his brother. Okay. Anders Fritz at second. We're the oldest on the team at 39. Almost a famous curling name, Peter Folk. That's right. At third, it would be if we dropped the E. <laughs> and Marcus Hasselberg, 26-year-old student from the famous Hasselberg Swedish curling family. Three times silver at World Junior Championships. 
starting to feel old. I know I curled against their parents. It's not uh, not a good sign, yeah, Armin. <laughs> me too, me too. <laughs> yes. A couple of good young teams here. They've had a good run here this week. And Hasselberg has the hammer here in the first end. As you said, pretty open. You didn't? Did you play any of these teams, Mike? I didn't play. No, they weren't in our pool this week. So uh, first time seeing them. But uh, you know, when you come in off a, off a victory in, a, in another cash field, and these guys are on a roll, it's uh, they're pretty confident, I would imagine. And said to already had some world uh, championship success at the junior level. So a couple of good young teams. So we're still here in first end action. Uh, it's fairly open end. We've got four other games going on. And uh, we'll keep you up to date on the scores in those quarterfinal matchups. We got three games coming today. Uh, we'll show a semifinal game and the final. Later on, we'll give you the times that we'll be broadcasting those games too. This morning, my name is Armin Harder, and big treat this morning to be commentating with Mike Harris. And uh, since we see there's not much going on in this end, it's fairly defensive, fairly open. Hasselberg has the hammer. Uh, yeah, not, not, a, not, a, not a great steal opportunity here, certainly for uh, Erickson, but what he could do, that little corner guard over in the corner, if they get a hit and roll out here from Hasselberg, he'll try to go around that on his last one, just to maybe force, force a single, but uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty, uh, pretty far over there. We got some very wide sheets here. We got the five meter Maximum. Yeah, it was interesting. Uh, first time for me playing on on that international width, and the uh, the tick shot's tougher than you 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 think it would be. Just a good end to get your feel for draw weight here for both teams. So semi-important shot here for uh, for Erickson. He'd like to make sure he stays. Or excuse me, Hasselborg. Make sure he stays. D don't allow Erickson to try to go around that corner guard. And we will say first end. It's a simple shot, but important here, just to not allow your opponents to try anything a little bit more aggressive. Now there's the rollout. So we'll see if it uh, tries to go around. I think it's worth a try. He will throw it over there. When we curled on this sheet uh, earlier this week. This, this turn wouldn't curl quite as much to the wings as it uh, in some of the other spots. So we'll see if the uh, Mark Callan and his ice crew have kind of scraped out that. Uh, that little hill right around uh, this area here it seemed to straighten out and wouldn't finish but rocks here are pretty aggressive though they do they do do move quite a bit so great great control of draw weight there for the first end very nice shot would have liked to get that rock over another six inches to the left as we're looking at it but uh, the outturn peel is still there, but uh, Erickson is going to the intern, which is uh, he was going to the intern. He's now going to the outturn. <laughs> still early morning. It is. Right? Well, there, there's there's room on the outturn side there. I think. Uh, Christian Lidstrom will just put the broom down, and uh, or Christian, sorry, throwing last rock. Erickson. Uh, Thinking the out turn might be easier, but there's there's that that yellow guard just kind of in your sight line, so there is a tendency here just to maybe pinch it a little bit, and uh, this will definitely curl out here. So not as not as easy a shot as it uh, as it looks. Would love to blank here.
And there's the miss. So uh, a point. Also Burke takes one here in the first inning. But a little uh, little momentum for uh, for Erickson. That's uh, mission accomplished. Forced the one. Yeah. We're coming to you live here from Curling Champions Tour coverage of the Champries Ma Champry Masters. This is the fourth men's event on the Curling Champions Tour this year. This season. And uh, the other matchups, we have Freiburg and playing against De Cruz. Vertemann, Switzerland's Bernie Vertemann on a, on a hot streak playing against David Chick, Czech yeah. Republic. Also first time qualifier this season. And we have Germany's Alexander Baumann playing against Denmark's Tommy Stirna. And then, of course, our match here, Hasselberg and Ericsson, Swedish teams. So we have uh, two Swedes, three Swiss, a German, and a Czech team in the quarterfinals. That's a great result for the Czechs. I'm uh, happy to see them uh, get into the playoffs here. Yeah. It's actually also not the Czech team that you would expect to qualify. They're usually standing a little bit in the shadows of uh, Jerzy Schnittl. Yeah, was there a Friday? It started uh, raining and snowing up here. You noticed a bit of a change on the ice uh, from from uh, from Friday to Saturday. There was there was quite a bit of frost on uh, on Saturday out there, but um, doesn't appear to be too bad this morning. And uh, with some time between draws, they'll be scraping and and uh, definitely definitely have to be really careful on this ice where you, where you, you pay attention to where the rocks have gone down because what we found was it started uh, you know a little slow. Relatively speaking, not not slow necessarily, but then got pretty quick for ends two, three, four, and then you know, start to work its way back down to where it started in the first end. So you just have to be you have to be pretty sharp and make sure you're uh, you you watch what path you've thrown through. One of the few events on the Champions Tour that's being played in it very nice, and uh, we have a 24 team, four groups of six draw here. No, there's the end set up now for Erickson. He's got a good opportunity. That, that center guard, while it's guarding that stone, there's a lot of movement here. So that, that stone on top four foot's pretty accessible. So Erickson indicating he'd like a back weight type shot to push that yellow rock back in the house. And I said this will be the indicator whether this uh, this intern spot. This is where the, I mentioned that that little hill was where it would really curl about two thirds of the way down, almost right next to our camera. There, would kind of jump straight to the right. Looks like they've straightened that out a little bit. Pretty close there, but it did, it did move. He had about three or four feet of. Uh, Ice with uh, backline weight and still got to that really high center guard. He's managed to move this, the guard a little off the center. Hasselberg will just try and replace that now. Problem for Erickson is if this guard, that, that where, he's, where he's feathered that guard to, it's in his way uh, to get into the forefoot area for his draw. So he's going to he's gonna need to get at that rock in the top of the forefoot now sooner than later. So in the second and third ends, once the rocks have gone down, the ice just becomes really, really quick. And this is looking a little long. You gotta, it's, it's going to get buried. That's the only good news there is that it is buried. But uh, so it does, does open up that uh, stone on the forefoot. Erickson, Team Erickson playing Red Rocks, having the hammer in this end. Yes. Have an opportunity here on. with the hit and roll. Okay. Maybe to turn the pressure around on Hasselberg. Drink. 
Mike, you're uh, you're living here part part time, on and off, uh, running yes. the. Well, explain what you're doing here. For well, yeah, we've uh, what we what we're doing is we've opened up a, uh, a high performance center, and what our what our intent is here is to really to provide a, a training center for many of the teams, uh, many you know many of the emerging countries in curling over here don't have okay. access to permanent curling ice. A lot of them play in, in hockey rinks after after hours type of thing. So what we've, what we've done, we've, we've, we've uh, want to open up our facility to, to uh, these teams for access, not only for the ice, but we have some uh, cutting edge technology here as well that we're using to, to help the teams. And uh, my role here is really to, to work with their coaches to, um, there's we have a technical aspect, we have Dartfish technology, which is uh, you know the best, really the best uh, teaching software out there for any for all, for many sports. But it's a it's a video software uh, system that that uh, allows us to you know one of those superimposed lines and grids, and we can draw arrows and all that sort of stuff. And we work on the on the on the analysis of the actual delivery. But uh, um, but said my my role really is to work with existing coaches. I'm not going to come in and coach their national teams type of thing. But I'm going to work with their with their national co national team coaches and. And just provide some some data and feedback to them, and all anything yeah. we do on Dartfish, uh, we are able then to upload to the to the internet, Go and uh, the teams can access anything oh, we've worked on us. here online, which is which is really cool. And then uh, kind of the more exciting technology for me, in fact, is we have a uh, an electronic brush oh, yeah, that yeah. actually, as you're watching these sweepers down, it shows how yeah. much pressure they're actually applying when they're sweeping, and how much how how uh, what their speed is as they go down. Whoa. And uh, yeah, well, that's all well and good in check, itself. Check. What we what we do test is, you know, as they're sweeping, you know, the speed at the oh. beginning is obviously okay. going to be greater than it is at the end of the draw. We oh. test them. Uh, we'll, we have a couple of exercises where they we go have them go end to end on a draw, oh. and then uh, have them recover for a minute, and then go back end to end again and see where they're where they start. If they start call it hundred, is there is there where they started the first one at hundred percent? If they can get if, if do, are they recovering back to hundred percent after a minute? So you as a skip, if you know that your team needs an extra 10 seconds or 15 seconds to get back to that 100%, especially late in the game, it becomes really important in terms of ice calling, how much you're going to, uh, you know, how much you can expect out of your sweepers late in the game. So every time we come up with a, t uh, a new test, uh, we seem to come up with three or four more. It's uh, cutting edge with the, the brush is only about uh, a month old in terms of technology. There's a university professor, University of Manitoba, Dr. Uh, Jerry Sandy, who invented this brush, and uh, he's got a patent on it, and uh, he's got one, and we have one. There's no other brushes like that in the world, so we're pretty excited. interesting to see how, how, how that gets used. And, uh, yeah, I think it's just great for team dynamics, and what we do is we do tests on the, you know, the, on the left side, on the right side with, with uh, the sweepers, with grippers, without grippers, you know, on hits, are they better off not using their grippers so they can maintain their speed as they slide down the ice, all that sort of stuff, so I'm excited just to come up with, uh, we've got three or four standard tests that we do with the teams, but I think as, as we start using this technology, we'll, we'll come up with more and more uh, options for the teams and it's pretty exciting so well, that's <coughs> lots of activity here in uh, Champry going on uh, Champions Tour second year here and now this uh, with the performance center uh, very ex very interesting with uh, with the, the high-tech equipment to see how yeah, it's cool uh, it's, it's, it's a really neat uh, you know the, the center is owned by the city it's as I said we're open it's not a, we're not really affiliated with the Swiss curling Association necessarily although We'll be doing some work with uh, with Andy Schwaller, the national team coach here, and a couple of his teams. Uh, he was Andy was in yesterday, really interested in, in the technology as well. So, um, you know, it's I think we're we're kind of unique in the sense. I know ca Canada, for example, has a high performance center, but it's really a closed shop. You can't uh, just go in there. Only top top ranked teams in Canada have access to to uh, to using the facility. So our, our 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 theory here is let's let's open things up and spread the. Spread the good word about curling, and and you know, in my job, I said as I've been working with uh, CBC and and uh, you know covered th three Olympic games and played in one myself and uh, Briars, all that sort of stuff. I know I know what the top teams are doing to prepare for these big events, and and I you know I want to share this with uh, with these teams. It's uh, nothing's really too secret. I you know even even guys like Martin and Howard and all these guys they understand that growing the sport worldwide is good for curling in general, and that's uh, that's Absolutely. what we're hoping to do. Absolutely. So oh. we'll keep an eye on that, and uh, we'll be quite and interested to see how that uh, center and how it develops here. Wish you all the best of luck. Thank nice you. Day. Yeah. I've had one tour of uh, my, I said I'm three weeks here and two weeks home is basically my schedule here. So uh, 
I've, I, I've emailed all of these teams and many of the World Coming Federation uh, nations. They know they know when I'm here, and uh, we're happy to have anyone uh, come out and try uh, see what we have to offer. See Lindstrom today is playing the thirds rocks. This team switches up quite a bit. Uh, sometimes Lindstrom throws. <laughs> You're only as good as your last shot, I guess, in this team. Is that how yeah. it <laughs> seems to be? Huh? Okay. And, uh, so Erickson's throwing last rocks here. I like, uh, you know, teams a really good aggressive end here. There's, although, uh, although Hasselberg's lying too, that's a, it's a bit of a nervous uh, shot here. This out turns so you can need to make the draw here. Make sure you don't leave a double. Hasselberg has shot rock in this end, but it's back of a four foot. Opting to throw another one in there. Yeah, down to down to the last four rocks at the end here. So that uh, fairly important shot here. So the, the deuce is uh, still a, <clears throat> a possibility here. So Hasberg's gonna have to throw a couple of nice draws just to get out of trouble here. I was looking at removing that red one, but uh, doesn't see enough of it in the jam on the back one. Yeah, certainly in play. Obviously in play. Very low delivery. Wish I was that flexible. There was a day. Sure, yeah. I'm the same. This is not like a little worm. Wants They're to really hoping this shot. is going to stop so there's no double. That's a little deeper than he was hoping. Perfect layup spot for Erickson to come down to. Yeah, although it's buried, I think uh, there's two choices. You can throw in a hack waiter and try to hit and roll in front of that back yellow, or you just follow down the freeze. There's a good, uh, pretty good look at it. That actually got pretty well buried. A big opportunity to make two here for Erickson. He'll want to make sure he remains in front of the tee line with this shot. Doesn't want to slide. Be I don't think he wants a freeze because that'll put him behind the tee line. Yeah, it would certainly give uh, Hassel an opportunity to, to uh, follow him down. Oscar Eriksson. Two nice draws last end, so a pretty good idea for draw away. Yeah. This is a little tight. That is my shot! Need to get past that guard. If he gets by that one, he's going to have trouble with his own, I think. I said that's really easy to do in that spot, let the rock over curl. Now he's, uh, now he's in a bit of trouble. Yeah. A lot of trouble, actually. If uh, Hasselberg can throw one, uh, kind of block that draw to that stone at the back forefoot, uh, it's going to be difficult to score here. It's there, you can still bump the red one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's so tough to go out and, you know, this is they were talking about the fresh, if you haven't played on the, on the patch of ice, it'll be, it'll be significantly slower out on the right side of the sheet as we, as we look at it there. And, and for that bump on the red, it'll be, you know, a good 10 to 15 feet heavier. So again, a big advantage here for, uh, for Hasselborg here. You see where third uh, Peter Folk is putting the brush and if you can uh, throw one full eight foot on the center line would be uh, put a pressure. There's a good indication as well. He's got ice outside the edge of the 12 foot so this is this in turn spot really snaps. I don't know how your Swedish is, but mine isn't very good, I got to say. 
<laughs> Might be able to order a beverage. There you go. <laughs> you're, well, you're ahead of me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, three-time world champion Pea Lindholm's here as well this week, and I'm sure he's pleased to see both these teams in the uh, in the quarters. Definitely yeah, one, of his, one of his two guys. Oh, so sure. He'll be playing in the uh, Slam in Canada. Okay. Yeah, big Should event this week in uh, Brooks, Alberta, actually, where there's... Uh, I saw you, Adin was in a C qualifier, I think, yesterday. I'm not sure how he did. But, <laughs> but yeah, a little wide. Yeah, and, deep. and a little deep, really. That's... Uh, the line wasn't uh, terrible if he could would have stopped at the top eight foot, but uh, this leaves a leaves a okay. hit. A little bit of pressure though. You know, hit and stay. Second and against three. Not the easiest shot in the world. Would recommend uh, throwing down weight at this. I made this look pretty difficult uh, on the sheet earlier. <laughs> so I, uh, that's, that's why I'm commentating. We, we have it on tape. Yeah, that, <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> that's why I'm commentating. That's uh, that it's a good uh, good reason. Good reason I'm up here, but um, was that the question I have? Was that a shot for two or for three? No, it was, was, it was for three. No, it was for three. Was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, we yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, wide open. Well, that was a big swing. Yeah, especially in a low-scoring game, you know, it was one, like two, yep. one at the time, and uh, six then. So. But yeah. uh, shows our viewers that uh, players like yourself, things like that can happen. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Happens a lot actually. More, more and more every year, I <laughs> yeah, find. Okay. Yeah, that's why I stopped. <laughs> I just sit up here and talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I haven't missed a shot from up here in a few years, actually. It's been yeah. good. <laughs> so this spot, again, this will curl. So he just needs to do a little squat. Pay attention. Scare Erickson looking to get out of trouble here in the second end. Yeah, and there's not a lot of weight on this. Darn it! And Swedish counters. He's in trouble here. He might lay on the back one. Okay. Got lucky. So we got really fortunate lucky. there, only to give up one. Really lucky to give up one there. So. Boy, if he just touches the top one, he's in trouble. Yeah, it would have feathered. If he feathers the top, he would have probably given up three. But uh, really well played in there from Hasselberg. They did a good job just uh, executing. And, and uh, at the end of the day, the, the shot that really hurt, is it really hurt Erickson, was his first draw that came up short. So after two ends of play, Hasselberg stealing one here in the second, takes a 2 nothing lead. Hammer stays with Erickson, playing Red Rocks. Uh, we do have some scores on the other sheets. Maybe we can do a quick take a quick look at uh, who's playing and what the scores are. Well, Hasselberg here with the. There we go. There we go. Oh, sorry, uh, we got uh, Swiss matchup here. Mario Freiberger from Zug, Switzerland, playing against the defending champion of this event, Peter de Cruz, Geneva. Peter coming back from an injury that kept him out for a month of play. Doing good quite well. Team. Former World Junior Champions. The old guy on the sheet. <laughs> there was there was one guy that was I don't know if <laughs> I don't know if who's older, but uh, we had we had, a, we had a good conversation last night anyway at uh, dinner. So. Bernie Vertemont with a very young team though, leading two to one against David Chick, uh, first time qualifier here. And then we have Alexander Brown, and also a bit of a surprise. He hasn't showed up on the tour too much out of Baden, Germany. Playing against former world junior champion Thomas Stierne from Denmark. Stierne leading 2-1 to one in that game. And it's eight ends of play. And, of course, back to our own game here. On sheet five. Yeah, it was it was interesting for me playing against uh, Bernie, as mentioned. He's the kind of the the, the elder statesman out there on on the, certainly uh, all the guys we played in our pool. And 
He's the only team that we played against that really solved their problems with draws. You know, he was one of these guys really patient and called a really good game and, and uh, really impressed with, with his touch, especially. But, uh, you know, he just, a lot of these guys will kind of get in trouble and then run. You know, he kind of always tried to solve his problem with a freeze or a tap or a little hack waiter and uh, was really patient. So, interesting. And, and you know, in, in arena ice, when the ice is swinging a lot, it's actually a really good strategy if you can control your draw weight and, and those and those uh, soft shots. And they went undefeated in our pool and, and you know looked looked pretty comfortable, made it look, look pretty easy actually. They're uh, they're playing very well right now. Yeah, Bernie likes the swinging ice, and uh, his young guys will learn a lot from him playing with them. Yeah, absolutely. They're in uh, and they're good. They're good players actually. All their good team. So Hasselberg again has one well placed and guarded. So important that lead position, being get, getting those rocks in good position right off the start. And this looks like a pretty good shot too. Just needs to come up a bit. Good finish there, yeah. So uh, this is the first time you've seen Champry in white. Looks pretty impressive, eh? Yeah, I mean, got a lot of snow here. It was funny. I landed, I landed on Monday, coming uh, home, and it was 24 degrees. <laughs> and uh, look outside today, and there's about six inches of snow on the ground. So, it, and that's all happened in the last 24 hours. So. First, it, uh, it hit pretty hard, pretty quickly. Uh, first snow of the year. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, it's certainly a very nice view from our commentary box here too. Probably one of the nicest commentary boxes you've been in. It's yeah, top top five <laughs> for sure. Usually they're wooden, that's right, two by fours, and <laughs> and uh, you kind of makeshift in these arenas. And it's nice and warm too, which is good. We're uh, we're in the, we're in a, an enclosed area, which is great. This is actually the VIP area for hockey games, I believe. It is, yes. And, you know, the, a lot of the uh, the local uh, community meetings are held in this room as well. Lindstrom trying to put another one on top of that. Very useful rock here. Yeah, great execution. So you've had some teams already that you've worked with? We've had uh, just down. one so far. We had uh, the Spanish team uh, came in a couple of weeks ago, and I actually wasn't here. I was still over at there. home, but they came in and, and used the, uh, the video software, and then... Uh, the Latvian team are staying for three days uh, starting Monday, so I'm going to work with them. Um, I'm meeting with uh, Hungary actually after this game this morning, and I've had some some interest from uh, from around the world. It's been actually really good. Very good. Good start. So. And yes, uh, I think I think that broom is going to. Uh, the broom's, the broom's really cool. I mean, I, I just one of those things when I as soon as the first thing I saw it is that this. It really is going to change the way teams can, at least it's, qu it's quantifiable. Like, you know, everyone thinks, oh, I'm a good sweeper. I'm a, you know, you, you, have, you get it, you watch these guys and they're good athletes, but what you can do is we sync it with your camera. So as you, you just change your body position and see if you can increase the pressure and the speed. And, and so you can actually do it live as it shows right up on the monitor. And it's uh, said it's all, uh, it's really, really neat. I won't touch that thing. Well, you know, we only, or as a myself. skip, you only have to sweep for like six feet, Armin. That's what I have said. I said, I'm good for, you know, that T-line yeah, yeah. back. Well, that's what I always <laughs> said. And, you know, you sweep intelligently. That's bursts. That's yeah, just in bursts, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice shot here. That yeah. Really moved those around. Yeah, you got to open things up a little bit. It's still, uh, I would say, advantage Hasselberg at this stage of the end, but uh, there's a bit of work to do here for Erickson to get his due still. He's got, uh, he's going to be looking at three here in a second, so. And you make he does a have a double two. through the port, though, possibly. Yeah, yeah he's going to need to make a double or two just to, uh, to make that rock at the, on the right side count. Fritz. Trying to remove hey. a Erickson counter. Mm -hmm. It's a roll inside, too. Very some good really shot good making shot, out there yeah. right now. You see why these two teams are in the quarterfinals. There's a, another look at it. What a great, perfect roll. Good communication. 
So again, if, even if the double's made here, there's still he's still not out of, out of the woods yet because he's probably going to roll in front of that Yellowstone that's uh, buried. He makes a straight back double and rolls a little bit to the left. Still be just laying second shot. Yeah, and then uh, you'll see we'll see how so we'll probably hit the other one on the left side and roll in. So there's still a bit of work here to do for Eric to get his deuce. He said this this spot is that this is the same spot we were talking about how it really curls. Mm -hmm. Here and uh, we saw it last end that it, uh, it cost Erickson on his last stone. So you need to keep your weight pretty solid in this spot. It's a plus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Matt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, and he in. makes the double, but as indicated. Mm -hmm. rolls, we second or third shot. Anticipated. Oh, I guess not there, not. Left that in a really good spot. Did not actually roll Barry, which is good. He's got a little short angle yep. raised now to get rid of that stone at the top. Hey, there's a good look at it. Big shot coming up here for Hasselberg if he gets that roll. He'd love to roll in for for a second shot. Just roll a rock or two. To, doesn't need to roll Barry or anything. Hey, hey, hold up. Yeah, hold up. Needs to roll a little further and Beauty. just enough. Great shot. Yeah. Probably still have to go over that red one, wouldn't he? I think and it's pretty makeable. You actually make the angle raise double. Another good look at it. Just overswept it a hair, yeah. but uh, pretty good result. Just rolled enough to make take away that hit and roll to the inside. Yeah, they can, they can get rid of both yellows here. Angle raise. And key here, if you can just stick that angle raise, hit a half rock, and just make sure his red stays buried. Even if the double isn't made, the uh, top yellow should spring open. And then, uh, then the deuce is definitely on. Yeah, talking about the intern hack waiter. It's a tough shot on that top one. Tough to stay. Well, you have a couple of options here. If it uh, curls up, you get the top one. If it doesn't curl enough, you get the second one. You just want to make sure you get one or the other. Yeah, the, prob the problem is if you wreck on the guard, your deuce is out of the picture almost, you know, so he really, if he really wants to get his deuce, he has to make the shot he's calling. Speakers are not playing broom, now they're just keeping it clean. Another good looking shot here, just needs to finish. Didn't hit that enough. And the, the good news for Erickson is you can't really play a hit on that red stone, it's a very difficult hit anyway. He's considering it, but uh, there is room to make a hack weed hit and pop straight through those two yellows, but uh, not worth the risk. So again, Hasselberg going to the draw. Just put another one in there. So this is your first time you played an event in the... Yeah, yeah, first Champions Tour event I've played. I, I played a few events back, uh, you know, after the Olympics the Bund, and the before Bund the Olympics Trophy. in 98. I came over a few times, but, uh, you know, the, the thing for us in Canada, there's enough, there's enough events where we can play for this, uh, this kind of prize money where you don't, you know, the flights and uh, everything, you know, when we started, started curling 25 years ago, it all came down to money. You know, how, how much did we want to spend to fly to a certain, uh, certain event and, and do that? So um, I played in the, the, uh, the Burn cash spiel a few times, the old Boone trophy, yep. and uh, we came over to Grindelwald to play in a cash spiel just before, uh, Nagano, and uh, and I've curled. I've just I've been in Switzerland many times. Got uh, got some good friends here. Patrick Curleman and I. He said we, we, we played against Patrick in the Olympic final in uh, '98. But uh, he and I have been friends for about 15 years before that. He came over to Canada to learn how to speak English back in the uh, in the late '80s. And uh, you know, ironically, you know, 10 or 12 years later, we played against each other in the Olympic final. So we were we were already really good friends 
before, uh, before the Olympics. Well, we used to be good friends before the Olympic final. That's probably the best way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure he's still friends with you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Patrick and I, uh, so we've got, uh, he and his, we met, uh, met his, he met his wife, Janet, through, uh, through myself and a friend of mine. And, uh, Went to his wedding, so we're 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 uh, got, got, I have some history over here. And I, I actually spent two years living in uh, in Salzburg in Austria as well. So, uh, as a golf pro, as a golf pro there, so I played a couple of uh, summer spiels while I was here. Played in Fusen in a summer spiel. You're originally from? I'm from Toronto. Yeah, kind of born and raised in Toronto, and uh, still live there half the time. Well, we ah, we will go a little bit the same so. region. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can water down there, oh, nice, good. Yeah, we're, we're actually representing Oakville Curling Club, which is not far from oh, right. not far from Burlington at all, kind of the west end of Toronto. Little so calm. Same effort as Marcus. So what are your uh, his options here? Yeah. Well, they're just trying to figure out. I think, the, again, he needs to get... Uh, in there and try to try to get one buried. So they're, they've decided the uh, the outturn tap is the way they want to go. Um, up. Whoa, whoa. Come on. They're gonna yeah. have stick and make sure it stays buried. Yeah. The danger here is if they don't make this shot, yeah. they're, they're gonna be in a bunch of trouble again. This gets past the guard. Oh, very nice shot. Great shot, shot. almost got them all. Yeah. Uh, that red still open, is open. open. Yeah. Through the port. Certainly out of trouble now, anyway. Relatively. Let's take a look at it. You have quite enough energy. Yeah, not a lot. Not a lot of action coming off those stones actually out there. So it's. Uh, we, we found that you know the hack waders would would uh, stick pretty well, but uh, you know they would carry forward. But when you hit multiple stones, it kind of came off a little bit dead. Frost will cause that a little bit. So it did force uh, the chain to turns here. Hustle board throwing the intern through the port instead of the out. Removes it, but stays in the spot, doesn't get a roll. Well, this will give Ericsson the opportunity to hit and maybe get a little roll. Yeah. And still have a chance to set up his deuce. It really can roll either way. It's uh, They're indicating a roll to the left as we're looking at it in front of that stone at the side of the uh, eight foot. You need to be careful. It's actually possible to hit and roll across the top. We'll have to roll about a rock to the towards that stone on the outside edge of the eight foot, and uh, that he does need to stay shot stone. Otherwise, uh, the steel opportunity is back on for Hasselberg. He can just go around that center guard and, and uh, try to force the steel. Actually, even if this shot's made perfectly, you might see him do that anyway, Hasselberg. He won't be able to play a takeout on uh, on the red stone. The arc six stone if the shot's made successfully, so he'll probably end up going around the center guard and try to steal. Come on. Oh, oh. Part of the fun of curling at this level is it really comes down, a lot of it comes down just to strategy, oh. a lot of shots being made by both teams. Just skins past the guard. Plan B, that was not the call. Almost got uh, almost got away with it with a really nice shot, but rolled uh, half open at least. He's calling a quiet way tap and lo would love to stay, but with a two point lead, just make sure you kill it and uh, move move on to the next end. With the, uh, I'm missing that on the pro side, we call that. Om vi inte bara ska sprätta den. Är den öppen? Ja, jag tror att han kan gå åt den. Man kan sprätta den där, va? Ja, ja. He was asking if that stone's open. I think if it was buried, uh, it's a much easier decision. He could just throw peel weight and pick that out, and he'd still force the single here. So 
They're contemplating throwing quite weight in, quite yeah, enough weight to, to, to stay, but it uh, looks like they're just going to throw some pretty firm weight at this and just pick it out with a two-point lead. I think a smarter decision. It's much easier to control the bigger weight shots on this ice. The softer ones sometimes jump pretty hard, and once it starts to curl out here, it's, you know, the sweeping can't save it. Hasselberg, his last rock here in the third end. Trying to remove Eric's counter, and he gets the job done. Good smart call there, I think, from Hasselberg. Erickson will now try and blank this end. Take the hammer into the fourth. This is the same spot Hasselberg knows his stone in the in the first end, so we know we know it'll curl here. Lefty intern tends to go to. At least my intern does anyway. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, they're working it already. Oh, on off, which is a good sign. Yeah, yeah well done. Well executed. So blank here in the third. The score remains two to nothing for Hasselberg. After three ends of play, we're here. With Curling Champions Tour coverage of. Champry Masters. Champry being in the French speaking part of Switzerland. Your French is pretty good, I heard the other day. Yeah, not making bad. Your not speech. bad. I have my uh, I have my uh, We were just reading something that's I was reading it, but I, I you know I, I can I can get by in French and uh, I you know, I was in French immersion in school back home and so was I, but it didn't help me. Didn't didn't stick. <laughs> it didn't no. stick. No, and no, it's funny, my kids, I have three kids, they're all in French immersion as well back home, and uh, so I can't help them with their homework right. anymore. They're past that age now. Grade, uh, grade five French is uh, beyond my, uh, my, uh, my capabilities, but uh, I can communicate pretty well in, in French still. Well, so. now living in Switzerland, I wish I had paid a little more attention <laughs> to French, so kids out there, take any advantage. You can learn the language. That's right. Take advantage of it. It's a good life skill. Absolutely. So that rock uh, just needed to be a little further into the house. I can't imagine uh, he'll be hitting this anyway, so two points down. Yeah, you don't like putting guards up on rocks on top of the 12 foot. You can almost curl around them. Bertemann seems to be in control of his game too against Chick. Four of two in the third, four to one. Yeah, that's kind of that's what was Bernie's method all all week in our pool. Anyway, you just seemed to take two, give him one, take two, give him one, and you know have a three four. Yeah, four four late and, uh, did the same to us. Yes. Playing the scoreboard. Yeah, he uh, just again doesn't doesn't make very doesn't, didn't make any strategic errors, and uh, and he's got really good control of his draw weight. So uh, they're they're just playing solidly. Yes, if you want to be a good skip, you have to do two things. Don't don't make any bad decisions and draw the forefoot when you need to. And that's uh, he's, he's he's been doing that all week. That's how simple the game is. It is really, you know, it's uh, not making bad decisions is not as easy as it sounds. So sometimes. So we're into the start of the. Fourth in. My name is Armin Harder. I'm here with silver medalist from the Nagano Olympics, Mike Harris. And now, I guess, coach, coordinator, manager. Yeah, I'm not sure what we call. You I'm don't not, know what you're not, not actually the coach of these teams, but I uh, certainly can help. And uh, uh, some uh, director of the uh, the high performance center, I guess is the best All way right. to put it. And, and uh, director of the high performance. In yeah, and I said I said my sure. my again my job is to work with coaches as opposed to uh, become a, a a team coach per se. So provide them with uh, some again quantifiable data and, and uh, stuff stuff they can use with their own teams to uh, to become better a better team. 
That's what it's, it's not so much, it's, it's, it's not a learn to curl facility. It's you know, trying to get these teams that are here at this event to that next level. So that rock managed to hang on in the back of the 12 foot. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it actually ended up in a pretty good spot actually for Ericsson. It forced his Hasselberg to deal with it, stage for shot stone. And then uh, once they make a, a little play on this, they can decide what they want to do. They want to go around the center, they want to go around the corner guards. They've, uh, they can get into it, they can mix it up a little bit here, or they can uh, maybe clear out that front, uh, front area. And this is that spot, just wouldn't finish as well towards the wall. There it goes. They're trying to not leave that rock behind the corner guard to not allow a free, so they did a pretty good job there. There we go, Erickson's now going to go around the center. So if you have any, if you have any questions you'd like to ask Mike, maybe you can send us an email. Let us know where you're watching from. Interested to hear from you. And we'll have that email address up fairly shortly here. It's live at curlingchampionstour.org. There you go. Questions, comments, just let us know where you're watching if anybody's up. Already here on a snowy Sunday morning in Switzerland. I think all of Switzerland got snowed on, not just up here in the mountains. Yeah, it's a crazy temperature change in uh, in uh, in a week. You know, as I said, I landed in uh, Geneva on uh, on Monday in literally 24 degrees. Guys, people walking around in shorts, and and even up here in the mountains, it was uh, it was over 20 degrees even in the evening. So this is a huge change. High of minus five or six today, I think. Up here? It will be up here, yeah. Are you a skier? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a green run skier. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I do enjoy it, though. I, I kind of one of those things I never really got into it because I was curling so much. Uh, but uh, sure I spent a year in Banff uh, yeah. as the head golf pro out there and, and, and got on skis for the first time when I was there. But I was, I was um, uh, almost 40 years old the first time I put skis on. So. I, I do enjoy it. I do see the, the appeal. This is the first missed rock we've seen from probably either team. That's it, and that's a big miss. It's really. very it's, important uh, time. Now there's, again, they're chasing again, and that's, uh, Hasselberg's done a really good job in the first uh, three ends here of, well, uh, besides the first end, which is very open, but the last couple of ends, he's really been forcing Erickson to, to make the more difficult shots. And, and uh, you don't get a lot of opportunity to come from behind when you're you're playing defensive shots. Oh. Like you said, that was an important rock too. Erickson deciding to, to make an offensive move, and the rock not coming it really puts him in a hole here. Yeah, he took a bit of a risk going on the center guard, but again, two down, he kind of had to play that shot, and and now uh, this stone stays up in front of the T line. He's going to be chasing, so. Is it buried or is it open? Yeah, it's, it's, it's buried enough, I guess, is the best way to put it. All, again, one of those things where you end up, everyone wants to get it completely buried, but really, mission accomplished. Took away the outturn draw and is forcing uh, Ericsson to clean things up. So, yeah. so Ericsson, instead of being on the offense, is being forced to bail here. He can actually get rid of all three yellows if he hits this in the right spot. But he really wants to make sure he gets rid of at least two, but the straight peel is not going to help him much. Hanging a bit. Got one, got two. He gets got all three. There you go. There he, well, almost gets all three. That's road harder. Yeah. <laughs> Could have got all four. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now it's such a pretty good situation here for uh, corner guard. Corner guard two behind the T line. So again, Hasselberg, if. Uh, it would be a bit of a risk, in my opinion, for Hasselberg to kind of throw a draw here. So he might just go up and rip that corner guard, and there we go. Which he does. Yeah, and uh, you know, put another end in the books, really. There's no, no real good chance for Deuce without that guard there. Teams of this level, it's really hard to score yeah. Deuce with playing freezes. Yeah, they can throw pretty hard and pretty accurate. That's one thing I can never do. 
There you go. They did end up putting up a corner guard. What do you want it? You see our address is still up there, live at curlingchampionstour.org. We'd be happy to hear from you if you have any questions. Olympic silver medalist Mike Harris. Sportsnet is now you're working for. Sportsnet yeah, we're, having we, there, acquired there's a partnership with CBC over there, so Sportsnet will cover round robin games of the Grand Slam events. Right. And then uh, the semifinals, their quarterfinals and finals will still be uh, of, of the first uh, event of the year will be on CBC. So there's a there's a bit of a mix uh, over there with the hockey strike. Uh, you know, everyone's looking for programming. That's over great. Over there, so it's good for curling. curling. Curling can profit from that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, of course, Swiss hockey is. Uh, has benefited from uh, from the strike in the NHL, having brought a few good players yeah, over. Quite here. a few players over here playing. It's it's been good. I went to my first uh, Swiss hockey game the other the other night on Wednesday when we watched Lausanne play. Their, uh, I think they're Division Two team, but it was it was great fun. And Cristobal Huey, who played with the Chicago Blackhawks, won a Stanley Cup with them. Was in net for Lausanne, so it was kind of cool and. Home team won overtime in a shootout, so very exciting. The very home, good. It was, uh, yeah, it was great fun. I noticed you had a little clip on, uh, on, uh, I think it was on Facebook, uh, just yes, to yeah, kind of fascinated video. with the crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, the, the guys in uh, the, the Leaf games don't sing, you know. No. <laughs> Not much singing going on. It was good. They sang for the full hour. Well, even, even boring hockey games over here, the fans just yeah, yeah. kind of entertain themselves. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of it was great. You know, I said it was really, really fun. Well, I can recommend uh, you go take a look at a burn game. They I've heard that. 16,000 viewers, and there's a one side, there's about 10,000. It's uh, amazing. And they make a lot of noise. I think uh, Tavares is playing. In burn. That's right, yeah, Tavares is there. And, uh, Mark Streit. We got an exchange of rocks here. Very good nose hit. Well, after after a great freeze there from Erickson, Hasselborg came back, and that uh, that red stone will not be counting you. At the, is to make the perfect uh, nose hit, stayed frozen. Well, we basically only seen one mistake, and that was in this end. Earlier rock sliding through the rings. But the other net, the execution has been very good. It has been, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit more comfortable with Dan Ferrickson, but again, he's not he's not really threatening a deuce. He said the, the, he made a great freeze there, but uh, Hasselberg really was up to the task and uh, and came back. So he's still got to do some work. Any little angle here on this freeze will allow uh, Hasselberg to blast everything out of play. And uh, he's bumping here. I think maybe a freeze would have yeah, been. Yeah, would love to move it four or five inches and stay frozen. Uh, but again, real, the real key is staying right on the nose and not allowing Hasselberg to take it out. He rolls off this at all. The angle looks pretty good again. Yeah, awesome. Wow. Great, just yeah. great shot making. And as Rock comes in, you can see just nothing moves. I said, because you don't get a ton of action, as I said, off these stones when you're hitting more than one, you can't spring that out. I think even, uh, oh, even Kevin Martin, who throws it as hard as anybody, would have difficulty getting rid of that one. So, Eriksson fighting hard for his deuce here. But even if we try to get a little bit of a little bit of a chappa, we have to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Så jag gör den här så måste han ju jobba på den. Ja, precis. Ja. Kör som du då, då är det perfekt. Du hade det där, bra sättning. Höft. Du var lite lös va? Jerry Gertz. Ja. Watching in. Does that guy ever sleep? I don't know, but uh, it's... Samma som Peder, vad hade han split? Nu ser vi 9 o'clock here, so 10 o'clock here actually, so 4 in the morning back home. Actually, I don't think the clocks have changed yet. The clocks in Toronto change. Uh, we went to uh, back to standard time here last night, so got an extra hour of sleep. But uh, they're, they're not they're not changing back in Canada until the.
first week in November, so I'm not sure what that means. Is it seven hours or five hours? I'm not sure what it is, but it's... Uh, well, Ontario is usually six hours six. from here, so... Fly all back one. Is that five now? Six? You didn't change the clocks? No, special, man. No, we're changing the clocks in a couple of weeks. So. Okay. Anyway, Jerry, it's middle of the night. You should get some... Hey, <laughs> 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 He's Come always on. awake. <laughs> now, Jerry's one of those guys, great friend of curling. You know, he's, uh, he's done a lot of great work on the uh, World Curling Tour, you know, Grand Slam events especially. Another great shot. Just, just four perfect shots in a row from uh, these two Swedish teams, Hasse Horg and Eriksson. said making some very difficult shots look uh, look pretty easy. So we've got a do have a question here from Axel Rosander and uh, he's asking which uh, non-Canadian curler he holds the best maybe a list of the best four best lead best second. And that's a tough one, but uh, you know, best ever uh, non-Canadian curler. Right now, I would say the two the two best teams right now are Olsrud and uh, and Adine. I think that's uh, that's pretty clear just with their uh, their world rankings. Uh, but uh, best ever, you know, you got a guy like Pei Lindholms, won three world championships. That team, that that was that was a great team yep, as well. Very good. And uh, they were they were time tough. Yeah. They were great communicators. You know, you talk about a lot of things, but the, that was a team that as the rock was going down the ice, they were always talking and they. Uh, they really took the, the game to, to uh, I thought, to uh, really elevated the, the level of play over here in Europe for, for many of the teams. And they were probably the most consistent uh, European team that I saw. Hey, over here the at years. the moment, coaching both these teams as national coach, so he's got an easier job. He only has to look at one sheet yeah. this morning. There's been a couple of really good, uh, you know, good Scottish teams as well over the years with uh, David Smith. David Smith and uh, is that Peter's, David, David's son here skipping a team. And, and uh, again, it's bad when I played yeah, against the parents before. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that probably my, my top team would be uh, would be a Payas team. I think would be the best team. Certainly and won Ols, a lot Ols, of titles. Olsrud's a close second. Um, they're 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 a fantastic team as well. And uh, they've they've again they're that's a team that's kind of been, been runner up a few times, and uh, they're they're due to win a major event. You know, they've they've been a runner up at the Olympic Games, couple of World Championships. I think they're, uh, it's only a matter of time before Seven. they uh, before they win something big. And, and Adine's Seven. getting better every time they play. Uh, they they they've uh, first couple of times I saw Adine play over in Canada. Um, they really they didn't have much of a kind of soft game. They couldn't get out of trouble with the with the draw weight, but uh, they've they've remedied that and through a lot of hard work and practice. They have every shot in the book right now. Sappen ger han ju fyra på körningen där. Alternativet skulle ju vara att slå och vicka. Vi får inte vicka hit. Precis, så. Dit är det farliga. Då kan jag ställa den. Då går det nästan vicka för långt. Ja. Ska vi bara bränna av den då? Jag tycker nästan det. Vi kan fortfarande köra en väckefart, tycker jag, typ så här eller så. Så Hasselberg var looking at hitting these two in the pocket and and getting rid of both reds, but I don't even think his his yellow stone at the side of the eighth is in such a good position that if he's able to even just hit and roll out, what he doesn't want to do is, is hit that stone on the nose and leave some sort of chance for a little skinny double to uh, to allow Eriksson to score the deuce. So he just picks this stone out and rolls away. I think uh, Eriksson's going to be forced to take one. He's looking at hitting that right on the nose, and he said if he rolls an inch or two to the right as we're looking at, he might leave a, a little feather double that might, might bring the deuce into play. So doesn't need to overthink this. Well, Alex, I hope your question was answered a very difficult question. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it, it seems to go in cycles, right? You know, and, and what I look for in you know, talk, talk about best ever is this consistency. And, uh, you know, there are teams that have been that have had been on a roll and played really well. Uh, but you know, in terms of teams that can compete on a worldwide level consistently, they said Peya and Olsrud and Adina are the three, uh, three most consistent 
teams that I've seen over the last number of years. So that, uh, that you really could have success at any at any bar school anywhere in the world. You know, Nicholas won a major event last year in uh, in uh, Canada. They are uh, the, the the Brantford Grand Slam, which is coming up. Nicholas is actually it wasn't a Grand Slam last year, but he's actually the defending champion in that event. And, uh, they beat uh, Sven Mikkel in the final, and De Cruz was in the semis, and I think Stern was in the semis as well. So, you know, we're starting to see a lot of more, a lot more presence from the European teams in Canadian events, and that's uh, it's a good indicator of what the, uh, the level of the over here being raised. So I think the Champions Tour is playing a big role in that, Absolutely. allowing these teams to play a, a continual high level you throughout have to the play. season. Yeah, you have to play against the best teams to, to improve. We just saw the clock splendid in there. They won't be in effect until the semi-final. He's got an email from Tommy Stern. That played against him a number of times. Another dad that I played against. Yeah. He's actually wondering. He's yeah, actually wondering what his son is doing. And uh, Thomas, uh, what? No problems there. Uh, he'll be, he'll, he'll five be happy to, to hear. Two. Yeah, he's doing five. well. Five to two after four ends of play, and uh, we'll update those scores shortly. Yeah, he's up, uh, up three, up three with the hammer, Tommy. You're in good. He's in good shape. Yeah. So, greetings out to Denmark. We got viewers from Vancouver. So, greetings and welcome. That's really middle of the night in Vancouver. That's a long way. <laughs> so, uh, it's got the jam on the back, but those two yellow rocks are sitting. Pretty yeah, good there for perfect, perfect, perfect roll of the game. So, no choice here for Erickson but to draw the, uh, but to draw the forefoot. So can this. Uh, this intern side, there's been a few rocks down here. This is where this rock went deep here in this end, got Derrickson into trouble to start. So this is a quick spot, you needs to be careful. But it's a pretty simple draw, just draw the eight foot. You gotta go a little. Needs the eight foot. And a big miss, short. So again, the simple shots are proving difficult here for uh, for Erickson. They've made some some difficult ones, but uh, the key simple ones have been he's been in trouble. So steal of two. Steal of two here after four ends of play puts uh, Hasselberg in a commanding lead over his countryman Erickson. Erickson, who's been on a roll the last few weeks. Finds himself in an awkward position. And we'll go through the scores on the other sheets quickly to update. The Mario Freiberger and uh, Peter de Cruz, a Swiss Duo here competing, two to nothing after four ends of play. A steal in the fourth. Yeah, big steal for De Cruz. He was in big trouble that fourth end. Made two two long runbacks to get out of trouble. And there's Bernie, Bernie just uh, Bernie Vertman. Perfect curling strategy. Take two, give him one. Yeah. Playing the scoreboard. That's all about math. <laughs> it is. Leading David Chick, four to one. There you go, Tommy. Good luck. Same thing. Take two, give him one. Take three, give him one. Even better. Up, uh, five to two there with the hammer playing the fifth then. So in good shape. Greetings out to Denmark. Glad you're watching in this morning. So we're back here in the fifth end of play. Curling Champions Tour coverage continues today with the Champagne Masters. And we'll be showing you two more draws, the semifinal and final. Semifinal game at 11 o'clock European time. And then again, the final at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And we'll hope you'll stay with us for the rest of the day to enjoy coverage here. My name is Armin Harder. I'm here with 
Mike Harris. And Mike, thanks for taking the time this morning. No problem. Got an extra hour of sleep last night. It was good, and I, I needed it. <laughs> I, I had, needed it, yeah. I had to really <laughs> ply him last night to make sure he got here this morning. I wasn't quite sure. Well, so I said, I've got my, my guys here from, uh, from Oakville that are playing, so we're going to, uh, we have a car. After we didn't qualify for the playoffs, we decided to, I want to take the guys around uh, down, to, down to Lake Geneva and uh, give them a little tour this afternoon. So. Absolutely. If they've never been here, it's certainly a beautiful spot. It is, it is. And slid a little far, throw, throw a little bit too much. Yeah, it's okay though. He's four up, you know, throw it in the rings. It's uh, no, no problem. So strategy pretty simple here for Hasselborg. Throw a couple in the rings and then start peeling the guards. And, and, uh, and again, Erickson, not a lot of decisions for him to make either. It's uh, pretty much go, uh, go hard here to try to get a deuce. You don't need to get it all back at once, but certainly needs to score. And they really needs to make a couple shots just to build uh, build up a little confidence here. They're uh, struggling. We have Mark Cullen standing behind us, uh, ice maker here for the Champry event, and uh, with the shot making we've seen this morning. Yeah, it's uh, been it's good. A, it's the uh, lots of swing, yeah, which is a good thing. So it's a compliments to the ice crew. Uh, excellent shot making, and that's you can only do that on good yep. ice. Yep. Yeah, yeah, holy, Struggling a little bit with the, the frost. Mm. It was tough to get scrapes in between the draws too. I think the draws were fairly tight together yesterday. So every time uh, you played a game without a scrape, certainly the frost was was, was accentuated. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so no real indication of that this morning. It's been uh, it's pretty yeah. good. Uh, that's true. Uh, there's 20, 24 teams in three, three, three days. days is a pretty tight schedule. We may extend that a little next year. Start on a Thursday night and uh, yeah, just give time for a scrape. Give a little time for more more ice work. Little uh, little fly by the seat of the pants uh, story for the uh, for the ice makers uh, this week <laughs> there. If you We'll look at the rings here yeah. if we get a chance. That's an amazing little story. Yeah, so there's, uh, it was here on, uh, we're, we ordered some circles in and uh, they uh, kind of overcame, they, they end up uh, going out in those the blue and red, uh, some blue and red tablecloths yes. were cut on a template and actually laid out by, uh, by Mark and the volunteers. Mark will yeah. be taking those home for parties for the rest <laughs> of the season. Uh, great, great job. The guys come yeah, up. It looks, they're pretty round. You can see a couple little overlaps here with a little darker blue, but that's what that is. They're, well, they uh, they're actually paper underneath that right. uh, were lined up, all done manually. So uh, compliments to Mark and to DDA, who's our, uh, our maintenance guy here. He was in there with the X-Acto knife and a template cutting those out. And it was quite the adventure. Over uh, the, the back left corner, sheet one was the first house that was done. It's uh, not quite as round as the others, we'll say that. But well, that's <laughs> why it was put in there. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was uh, pretty well done, I must say. So that's uh, just ingenuity. You, did, you didn't, sir, Mark. You didn't start with the TV sheet to, to put in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mark's was talking about putting a hexagon on the first sheet just to try it out to see uh, see what the players thought, but. Uh, I thought it was pretty ingenious, actually. <laughs> Marx is saying it's quite difficult to get a circle out of a square tablecloth, but done, they did well. They did well doing that. So. Blew me away. I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd, I would have loved to have seen the face of the place the story went in. They said, I need 5,000 meters of tablecloth. I thought it was a hell of a talk. Halt! So there's, uh, there's a big miss there from Erickson. They actually got the, uh, got a nose hit on a corner guard and then uh, hit and rolled out themselves trying when they're down two. And you know, that, uh, when, they, when you're doing that down, down four points, you're, uh, you're in quite a bit of trouble. So this again lets, uh, lets Hasselberg try to get the peel, get out of trouble again. Well done. It's a good chance for a deuce here. You have the corner. And, uh, Go around. Desperately needing some some points here. Erickson, if he wants to stay in this game.
Mark came down last year to do our first event here in Champry. And he did such a good job, we invited him back. <laughs> Past the guard, nicely played, good sweeping. Yeah, perfect. Four point lead, I expect uh, Hasselboard to go peel the guard. Might be able to see uh, uh, you know, an inch or two of that zone, so we'll see what he elects to play. You look at it from the front. or play the peel the corner guard and uh, playing the freeze, which makes Ericsson happy, I'm sure. Even if you do it there, they will have that. You clip it. Yeah, clip it. And they've gone up and peeled the guard. Turned around, look at the scoreboard. Decided to, to <laughs> go out and peel the corner guard. Four point lead. No need to mix it up. May have a chance for a double at some point. So if you get a nose hit here from uh, Erickson on that stone on the top four foot there, the angle's good for a double, so still a bit of work to do. For Erickson to get his deuce. Late into the end, he's actually calling the uh, the corner guard just to replace that guard and uh, guard his own stone. So what he's doing is guessing that uh, Hasselborg will will play to peel the game, but not so sure now that we're down to skip stones. It's a bit of an odd call, I thought. And I think that stone is exposed now. There's a yeah, you can see a good three quarters of that. So. Again, go, Anton. simple miss from, uh, from Ericsson, but I didn't like the call either. Down the skips rocks, no? Marcus Hasselberg take a run at this counter. Trying to keep the game clean. Day, but not uh, not critical that he does. Ah, pretty good shot. Jimmy Fris. Bra lyer. Fan vad du tittar på slutet. Så jävla svårt att få ner dem. Erickson, two more rocks to come. Trying to figure out a way to maximize those. Yeah, it's pretty tough. I mean, the, the, if you if you're really I mean, he does need to score two. He tried to play a corner freeze on the uh, 
the left-hand side of that stone on the center line, and uh, so there's no way to get it out. By playing, uh, playing a little hit and roll frozen, it's just that it's so difficult. To, you have to be perfect. We saw last time, though, the, the rocks were perfectly frozen. It's the only way to, to not allow uh, your opponents to remove the stones, but he's, he's actually going to play the double here and uh, try to spin up behind the corner guard, which is really, really tough. But again, just a, a really well-played end here from, uh, from Hasselberg. And, and uh, they, they had one miss, and then, uh, you know, unfortunately for Ericsson, they had two misses behind it that, uh, that got them into trouble. And they had their chance with the two corner guards, and they were throwing and uh, hit and rolled out, which is uh, just kind of a cardinal sin at this, uh, at this level. Oscar Ericsson's first rock here in the fifth end. Trying to remove two yellow rocks. Good turn takeout. Has one. Got the roll, but he didn't remove that second counter. So it's a pretty good shot, though. I mean, at the end of the day, you, you can't play a takeout here. So there's a little bit of pressure here on uh, Hasselberg that he, in the sense, he needs to throw this draw into a spot where there's no double. So anything behind the T-line on the right-hand side of the sheet's pretty good, but uh, he still has to make the shot. Okay. But uh, we've seen no indication of a miss yet from, uh, from Team Hasselberg. He's pretty sharp. This is really the first pressure shot. It's not a difficult shot, but it's the first pressure shot we've really seen him uh, seen have to throw, so. So he wants this Rock somewhere into the white on a parallel. Yeah. T liner sure. better. T liner better would do it, yeah. I'm assuming he gets us in the ballpark, then it's up to the sweepers. So kind of off and on, so it's kind of in their hands now. Backing away from it a little bit. Not taking the curl here. It's pretty straight. It hasn't only curled about two feet, so it, it usually like makes it go here. further. Just to hang around is the angle there for the dog. Perfect, I would say. I don't think so. The rocks, the rocks aren't lively enough to make that shot. They're, uh, this would be a shot uh, I don't think he can make. He just won't get enough. You won't get enough action off his shooter to take that rock out. He needs to play it with the intern, and that means it changes handles. Yeah. And it loses a lot of energy coming off that. I'm going out on a limb here and saying one yellow for this call. This is really, he might be able to roll Run, in and nudge red it sideways. Maybe. He certainly isn't going to get to it. I would bet, uh, bet breakfast on the, on the I'm not getting a deuce here. Croissant, croissant, and jam. A croissant, that's right, croissant and coffee. <laughs> it's next to impossible. But you agree he's got to try it? No, I no. don't. I think he should just take this one and right. uh, make sure he scores. You know, he's going to have to. Get, he's got to go into steal mode anyway. Yeah, he might be, uh, might be down one, another one here. Yeah. Well, deciding the game. And yeah, that's the problem. You hit it, hit second shot, or you're going to give up the steal. So, uh, you know, just I think I think forcing the issue more than they needed to there and. Another steal for Hasselborg. Uh, five nothing after five ends of play, making it look easy. They've certainly been the uh, the better team, virtually at every position here this morning. And we'll quickly run through the scores on the other sheet. Please, Martin Stuckey and his crew. Yep. Beautiful. Good job this morning. And we got uh, Mario Freiberger with a big three in the fifth in. Yeah, takes, a, takes a lead, three to two. Yeah, even though Cruz has, was up two, he was in huge trouble in the fourth end as well, so Freiberger finally, finally paid off for him. Being patient. Eric yes. yes. gives up the deuce in the fifth. The game's a little closer. Back one with, 43 lead with the hammer in the sixth, which is pretty good position to be in. That's against David Chick from the Czech Republic. And a steal of one in the fifth for the German team from Alex Baumont against Tommy Stirner. 
5-3 score here. Yeah, all, all three of those games actually tightening up. Uh, whoever scores in the sixth end will have, you know, have momentum in those, all three of those games. So it's a big, uh, big sixth end coming up. Morning quarterfinals here, Champry, Switzerland. So a five-point lead here. Hasselberg's going to try the the tick shot with uh, with peel weight, <laughs> throwing that pretty hard. Yeah. But uh, being tick. up being up five points, there's no need to to throw it quietly and leave a couple guards there just just uh, by mistake. So that rock was going to hit that red zone pretty hard. They just stopped it on the way down. At least for our new viewers, the curling. That rock cannot be removed from play. Yeah, the free so guards on. Are free guards on. It can be moved, it just cannot be removed. So after this rock comes into play, Hasselberg can start playing tickets. So the way Hasselberg's been playing his team uh, certainly going to be a really an uphill battle here to, to do anything in this game. Yeah, I know Erickson's at a point now where he needs he really needs a couple of uh, couple of flashes. He needs to score three, or you can need to do the math, score three, and then steal one in the seventh, one in the eighth, one in the extra. So uh, certainly. Uphill to say the least. It's been a good game. The score is actually not indicative of what the game was like. A lot of good quality shots, but you know the the important ones. Hasselborg's team has, has made more of them, and uh, Erickson really two two simple misses. He had a hit in the in the. Second end, wide open hit that he actually got lucky not to give up a steal of two and end up giving a steal of one and then missed the draw to the eight the foot. The draw the eight foot in the and that was the, 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 the big that was the big one. You know that uh, instead of being two one, it was four nothing and and uh, they've been chasing. But he said really not not no real great opportunities for him to score a deuce even. He's had the hammer since the first end and Whoa. just Hasselberg's uh, been forcing the issue the entire game. Really only missed one shot I can think of. They, uh, they, they nosed a guard in the, in the last end and then didn't. Uh, Erickson had no chance to, they, they, they followed that up with a miss of their own and opportunity was lost. But it's curling, anything can happen. We've seen it happen many times before. Uh, a few weeks ago, Mark Dacey, again, he was playing in, in Basel, had him in for a couple of ends, commentate. And Mark so Dacey, a very famous game against Randy Furby at Absolutely. the Briar. I commentated that one and uh, never had a chance to win until the last rock stopped. You know, he's, uh, he was down four playing uh, Randy Furby, who was... Uh, three-time defending Canadian champion at the time and it was all 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 but over and uh, Mark took three in the eighth gave him one and took three coming home to uh, to uh, to win that prior final and uh, you know really was shocking you know I said I've, we, I I've had the good fortune of commentating all of Randy Furby's uh, Briar wins since with the, with his new lineup with Dave right. Nedowin uh, throwing last rock and those guys <laughs> just don't miss very many shots and 
to, to give up a three and then a steal and then uh, or to take one and then another three and and, and ten was I mean, you know, perfect execution by Mark Daisy and his team in his last three ends. It was, uh, it was quite something to watch. I don't think I've ever seen a uh, you know, player so upset as David Baldwin was his, uh, after he threw his last shot there. And, and then knowing that Daisy had a draw to win the ball. It's a good, it was a, it's a great lesson. You never give up. You never give up, that's right. There's a nice shot from the Erickson team. Yeah, it's not, uh, still not totally buried. I said, this, I said with, the, with the nice movement here on the ice, it's, uh, it's pretty, pretty easily accessible. Okay, I think this is a good ice cream. Yeah. 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 So these guys are making, making them all look pretty easy today. Ooh, just gets past the car. Perfect. And the really good news is that he stayed in the forefoot. So even if even if the one now gets totally buried, they can go up peel the corner guard, and they're still probably going to be able to force Erickson into taking a single point. So perfect roll into the top of the forefoot allows. So on the replay there, uh, when things are going for you, that could have just as easily touched the, the guard. guard would have been bad, yeah. Just hairs past the guard. And here's here's a miss, and they're going to roll for a center guard now. And again, yeah. just huge trouble for uh, for Hasselborg. And they're going to look at this and say, "Really, there's not a lot uh, they need to do." But uh, it's a pretty good situation. But they, they might want to guard five. But five points up to I mean, my my first. I I'd be running up and peeling that center guard pretty quick. <laughs> Down to skip stones. There's, uh, only, the only way Erickson's going to score a deuce here is if you leave that guard in play. That's right. And, uh, looks like he's listening to you, Mike. Hasselberg will remove that guard. Yeah, even though he's got two in the forefoot, Erickson was praying that he was going to play some sort of draw or guard and leave him the outturn come around. But uh, good call. Barony Vertemont drawing for two here in the sixth end. Yeah, just keeping up his uh, the usual. Didn't take two when he had the hammer. Yep. And he makes it. Yeah, so Bernie's uh, now up 6 3, seven. playing seven. And they're playing against David Chick from Czech Republic, who's First qualified. First time he's qualified in a few seasons. And uh, Bauman Sterner, they uh, they blanked the six then, so uh, Sterner is still up two with the hammer, playing the seventh end. In good shape. Yeah, didn't quite see what happened in Cruz's game. De Cruz is throwing first, so he must have scored. Yeah. I don't know how much though. We'll have to wait till the score gets put up. Peter De Cruz coming off an injury. Got Canada been out of action for about four weeks. Didn't play the European qualifiers last week. Back in action again this week. Got though. European Championships coming up in December. A lot of these teams here will be either trying to qualify or have already qualified for that event for their country. The uh, story with uh, Sven Michel second. Did you hear the story? Did you hear the story with uh, Sven Michel second in the uh, final of the uh, Swiss? Left, he is kind of like a pop, popped a kneecap and uh, end up putting a 
But he came back and placed the ball, but he's, he's gone in for surgery, and yeah, uh, he, he will not curl until the uh, Europeans actually take place. So uh, that's, well, he's hoping that he'll be able to curl. Just went in and had, uh, I think he had a meniscus tear as well, so pretty, pretty serious. So there's the last rock of the end was made there from Hasselberg. So five nothing through six, and that's uh, enough work, but uh, just a really well played game there Absolutely. from uh, from Marcus Hasselberg and their team. Just no mistakes and uh, made it look pretty easy this morning. He did. Are we going to? Uh Move the cameras if we can do that. Just pick up the other the other game a little bit. Yeah, why not? Pick up the Stern and Bauman game. Let's we'll see if we can uh, angle our cameras a little bit so that we can just cover that German Denmark game. Well, Tommy's watching after all. It yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get, <laughs> try and get him some joy there. There you go. There we go. We can't move the cameras right over the rinks. We'll just have to take the side angle a little bit. Stern was actually in the same group as Hasselberg. Hess, Selzloff, Zloff, Logan Gray, and the Latvian team. Gubis. There were four teams with uh, with three wins in that pool, actually. So it was uh, all came down to that draw to the button. Sorry, but uh, as you pick this up, uh, Bauman, the uh, throwing yellow. He's got uh, three guards out front. Nothing in the rings. And so Schöner with uh, with the hammer. Double peel there from the Danish team. Great shot. Bauman still has the center guard. You can uh, try, use that to try to steal. Alexander Bauman from Baden, Germany. Learned to curl and plays in the curling rink of the former military base there, the former Canadian military base. Wow, a hogger. And that's, see uh, one of those. that should put this end in the books here with uh, Sharon now being able to peel out. So a big miss from Bauman. Those bases were closed in the early 90s, around 93, and that curling club continues to run today in Baden. Accomplished. We'll be showing the quarter final or the semi final at eleven o'clock. Yeah, quick turnaround for these teams. They're not going to get off the ice until uh, probably shortly after ten o'clock, so under an hour. Quick sandwich and a drink, and then back on again. Pace has been pretty good, though. I mean, uh, I, you know, play a lot of bonds with, without time clocks in, uh, over in Canada, and then, uh, you know, 215, 220s about average, and the games here actually move along pretty well. They're in around two hours, so nice to see. Teams making quick decisions. And yeah, 
be nice to have time clocks, but it just means so much personnel. You six oh, sheets yeah. going and six six volunteers. Yeah, you don't need them. You don't need them. Yeah. So you have an update to Cruz. He only got his uh, one in the sixth end, so it's right. uh, okay. Kruger is tied with the hammer here, playing uh, playing seven. And they've got a few rocks in play. So we'll just be exchanging guards here. Ba Bowman will be throwing up a guard. And Stern will be removing them. Yeah, run, run for home, put another end in the books is the goal here for, uh, for Stern. I talked to a few teams in this situation uh, back home. Um, Sometimes they don't mind taking one in the uh, in the seventh end because what it does it only really allows your opponents to throw one guard without you being able to remove it. When when the other team's trying to steal, they get to throw the center guard. They'll throw a second center guard, and then you're kind of into it. Even though it's just trying to steal two, but uh, up three and giving them the hammer, it's almost more difficult to score your three uh, than it is to steal two. So uh, we've seen the odd team back home start to take one in this. Yep, that's uh, right. You can start taking end. playing takeouts earlier. I still, like I still like having the hammer personally, but yeah, I've, seen, I've seen a few teams do it. So. It does go a little against Hoyle. So curling must be pretty big back in Ontario right now. The Jays were nothing, and the <laughs> <laughs> Jays are the done. The Leafs are on. And well, yeah. this was the Leaf season. I'm sure they would have done well. Oh this yeah, this is the year <laughs> for the was Cup. The year. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you're a sucker for punishment if you're a Leafs fan. I grew up in Montreal, so I, 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 I uh, I'm kind of a Habs fan at heart, but uh, it's uh, I've been a Leafs fan ever since. Well, all my life. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't uh I don't I don't remember the parade back in nineteen sixty seven, the last <laughs> time they uh they won. I think they won about a month before I was born, I think. But uh I was uh I won't tell you how old I was yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh it's uh it's been a it'd be a long hard road. Yeah, but you know, two of my guys, uh Ken and uh Ken and Scott are both pretty, pretty diehard, uh, diehard Leafs fans. And well, that's the only kind of fans. Leafs oh, you fans have to are. be. You, you do. You, you have to be. Don't you? you have to be a diehard Leaf fan. But uh, I did a, I did a little deal working with, uh, with Goldline back in, uh, in uh, Toronto, Goldline Curling Supplies, and we, we did a deal with uh, NHL, with the NHL to have uh, uh, officially licensed curling brooms. So you can get a, you can get a Toronto Maple Leafs curling broom or a Montreal Canadian. So I brought a Montreal right. Canadian's broom with me here to oh, Chambry, right. and they right. had to, one of them. They wouldn't touch it. They <laughs> wouldn't even pick it up. So. <laughs> yeah. I, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we've only got the, the brooms made for the Canadian teams right now. But uh, but if you go to Goldline, they'll uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to sell you. A leaf. If, if, if you want a Leafs broom, you can get one, Armin. So just so you know, it'll be my Christmas <laughs> present from somebody. <laughs> My mother will send me that. There you go. <laughs> Bauman's still hoping for anything. Yeah, that hogged rock really got them into trouble. So a double peel from Stern and then a hogged rock. And I said, it's, you just can't make mistakes like that out here uh, against these teams. You end, up, you end up paying the price. So it's uh, going to be interesting to see... Uh, if Sterner decides to play, he's just a wide open hit, but looks like he likes the out turn. The natural turn here for the blank would be to play the in turn with a short roll to the to the left. But, uh, maybe he's doing what you suggested. Yeah, maybe. This point. But you know, it's funny. I said a lot of a uh, lot of uh, young teams again talk about strategy and things that uh, we talk about, but this is this is really a kind of a very basic, fundamental, strategic, not a mistake, you know, but it just. Why make this blank attempt more difficult than it needs to be um, by having to roll eight feet across the rings, right? And this is uh, something that we just don't see uh, the top level teams playing. And there you see, he rolls right to the button and uh, ends up Looks taking like his arm, but that's okay. That, huh? 
but that's okay. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, it's kind of the, the, the good miss, if you want to call it that. But three up is a good spot. And they said it's nice they only have one guard in play now, and Sterna can start, uh, start peeling the guards. There's certainly no missing those guys out there, huh? they're, they're with the neon brooms and the, the neon shirts. <laughs> nope, and nope, nope. They get the stripe the, the bright, the bright, bright colors. We're missing the Finnish team uh, this, uh, this year here in Champry. They usually show up with their referee. Oh, shirts. yes, all right. <laughs> And uh, Team Gray, they were they got the loud mode oh, uh, pants yeah. going. So when you wear pink plaid pants, you really better play well. That's my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there we go. Sterna three up. He's gonna throw it through. He hasn't missed this one. <laughs> uh, I can make that one. Yeah. I can make that one. It's my favorite shot. <laughs> Bernie Vertemann needing to make a couple of nice shots here. Looking at two chick counters. Looks like Bernie may give up a deuce in this end. Yeah, it's hard to tell who's second shot over there from, uh, from our vantage point here, but. And there's another hogged rock from the... That looked like it picked. It's actually... Uh, you get aggressive rocks. They, they tend to be a little bit rougher, so you want to make sure that they're very clean. Lots of rotation Stuff as well. will stick to that, and rotation, absolutely. I'm the opinion, if uh, like a hog line violation, if a, if a rock doesn't have a three rotations, you, you should be have to remove it from play. If it doesn't have three rotations? Yeah, it should. Should have to remove it from play. Oh, yeah? yeah. You like throwing the helicopters down there. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> well, the aggressive rock should have. No, two and, a half, two and a half to three rotations, yeah. especially in, a, in an arena, okay. is, uh, is you almost have to do it because the rocks, as I said, they're the, the nature of most of the rocks that are used at the, at the major championships, they're, they're, they're aggressive, they take a lot of curl, but there's a little added friction on the, on the, on the running surface versus right. in this. If you, if you throw a soft handle, it just, uh, it, it may either stop turning or pick up some debris and... Uh, Uncontrollable. Yeah. yeah, there's a good look. There's, it's just making its first rotation. So it's still not even completed yeah, one it's rotation. Fighting the yet. rotation. Yeah. There's one. Yeah. And uh, you know, this is going to be about a, a rotation and a half, which is less than uh, we say we recommend uh, in arena conditions. And those, uh, those rocks will uh, not, not uh, run out either properly. They'll, right. they'll come up short. Yes, yeah, so that's about it. And look at it, it almost hit the sideboard. It's yeah. curled so far. That's yeah. the rocks almost out of play. Yeah. The, uh, the guard. But this, this, this is why I think we should bring in that rule. Uh, bring it. <laughs> I, all the opponents I play against, I don't want them to take. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. I mean, just, just let, let, let encourage them to, uh, yeah. to throw those little rotations. So here's a better hit. So what's one and a half, almost two rotations on a on a big weight peel, and that's more what we're looking for. And he gets the nose hit. Although the, uh, I said, although the execution wasn't there, but uh, you get the idea of what we're, what we're talking about with extra rotation. You see that in club curling so often. We've now got very good curl in a lot of clubs and here, here in Switzerland, for sure. Club curlers still, a lot of them tend to not put enough rotation on, and then they wonder why. Well, no, it's again no, part of it. Part of it is that you get in the last ten years, you the way the way the rocks are, are actually prepared. To, you know, ten years ago, you, no one would f even consider sanding the, the the running surface of a rock to give it some more curl. That was kind of a you you just you just would never do it. And uh, nowadays, it's it's ice makers can you can only make the ice so flat with with X pebble head that you decide to use in your curling club so the rocks are really the key to Absolutely. to making the, the making the ice curl and uh, with that added friction you have to put more rotation on it that's uh, you know, I think back uh, when we started curling I mean you, you, you know throwing one one and a half rotation you wouldn't see rocks change handles nope. very often nope. but uh, certainly that's not the case anymore Of course, very important for uh, you got four members on the team that they all throw the same kind of rotation. Otherwise, you'll get lots of different outcomes. Yeah, it uh, kind of simplifies your job as a skip when everyone kind of throws 
throws it in a similar fashion. David Chick hitting for possible two here against Bernie Vertemont. I believe that's two. That looks like it. So uh, Vertemont one up with the hammer coming home. And uh, Freeberger was forced to take one in uh, seven by DeCruz. So he's one up coming home without last rock. So he's uh, DeCruz at uh, one down with the hammer situation where always kind of a debate whether or not it's better to be one down with or one up without. And in my opinion, a lot of it depends on the ice conditions. If there's lots of swing, I, I, like, I, like, I don't mind the one down situation. Still no action in uh, in our game. We're getting down to the uh, the final couple shots here. Bowman needing to score three. He only has three rocks left to come. So Peel here should uh, should really do it. See those two corner guards, they're really not in play. The uh, sheets being very wide. The, particularly the, the, the corner guard on the top of the screen, on the right side as we're looking at, so there's nowhere. Rock in the 12 foot is nowhere. That guard's not even in play, so no choice here but to throw a little biter out on the wings here and hope uh, they get a miss. So Hasselberg in the semifinal will be playing against the winner of uh, Vertemont Chick. And uh, De Cruz Feiberg winner will play against the Sterne Bowman women winner. Those will be the semifinal matchups. That was a pretty good shot there from, uh, from Bowman, but uh, in case it might be too little too late here. We'll call that plan B, but it does the trick. <laughs> and the gloves come off. Yeah. Well done. Tommy Sterna beats Alex Bowman in that semifinal game. Really well done. The uh, good performance there from uh, Sterna. Got up early and uh, just things look pretty easy again. They were up 5-1 uh, after three ends and just 
tough ice to come back on out here. Yep. Well, Tommy, watching in uh, in Denmark, will probably be covering that game. So you'll Perfect. have to watch another drop. <laughs> yeah, another about an hour and five minutes from now. Go make yourself some breakfast and get a coffee. So we'll just wait out here quickly to uh, see the results of the other two ends and then we'll sign off and go get some breakfast myself. Perfect. We're here with Curling Champions Tour coverage from the Champre Masters in Switzerland. And I'm here with Mike Harris. We're not okay. Looks like we're actually having to cut our coverage or our thing. We hope to see you again in about an hour's time. Uh, if you want information, uh, final results, curlingchampionstour.org. You can get the results there. And uh, we hope to see you in an hour's time. Mike, thank you very much for uh, right. sitting in this morning. Been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. You guys, you guys do a great job here. This is... Uh, Yet, uh, great to great to see you promoting the sport, and uh, thank you. I'd like to see uh, hopefully do this again sometime. Yeah, I'll be looking forward to it. Okay, that would be great. So thanks live here from uh, uh, Champre Masters. We hope to see you in about an hour's time. Thank you very much, and uh, have a good, good breakfast. <laughs>